Yeah. All right, here we go. So we're on part one, day one of polynomial functions. And we've seen polynomials before. Um, remember, a polynomial is where you have shh, integers as powers, okay? Integers, um, positive integers only as powers, right? Now, what's going to be different here is that now we're dividing polynomials, which turns it into rational functions, okay? So when we have rational functions, it is going to be r. We're going to call it r of x which equals you have a polynomial in the numerator and you have a polynomial in the denominator. That's what makes it rational, okay? What makes it rational mainly is that you now have a X in the denominator. Does that ring some bells? Yes. Okay, an X in the denominator now turns it into a rational function for the most part. Okay, because of this, we have restrictions on our denominator, right? What is the number one restriction on our denominator? It can't be negative. It can, not negative, that's radicals. Okay, well, yeah. It's going to be, someone said it, zero. D of X cannot equal zero. Okay, D of X cannot equal zero. Okay, does anyone remember what happens when d of x equals zero? It's undefined, and what else? It's undefined, and we have possible two things could happen. Mm -hmm. It starts with an A. Asymptotes. Okay, we'll have either asymptotes or holes, depending on what happens. There's a hole in my graph, okay? So those two things can happen. Okay, so it's in there, I promise. Exactly, they cancel out. It creates a hole in my graph, okay? Um, if it doesn't cancel out, then it's a asymptote. Anyone remembers what kind of asymptote? Hmm? A what? Vertical, it is a vertical asymptote, okay? And it's vertical because we're saying X cannot be this value, right? And if you remember, oi vex, that's where your vertical is, your X. Oi vux, I said vex, vux. Huh? Y'all not remember this for domain and range? No. Oi. And meant for slope? Yeah, it was my cuss words in middle school, eighth grade. Hoy vux, I said all the time. Pretty sure. Pretty, pretty sure I got on my teachers, my math teachers. Now. Maybe this is a little karma. Um, but this is horizontal lines have zero slope, and it's going to always be y equals. Vertical lines have undefined slope, and they're going to always be x equal. Okay? That's your hoy vux. You get the cuss word, I hope. All right. Okay, so that's the whole gist of our rationals. Hopefully, it's now triggering some things in your brain. Yes? Yes. All right. So, we're going to start with our first example. I know I have way more space than you. Um, <laughs> just go with it. Okay. All right. So, the first thing when we look up here at our finding our domain of our function is that your domain depends on your denominator. Okay. Domain depends on the denominator. Okay. Our domain depends on our denominator. So the first thing you want to make sure is that your denominator is fully factored. So you need to make sure your denominator is factor the denominator. Okay. How can I factor this denominator? It's a quick mental factor, right? Exactly. I'm asking myself what multiplies to give me 12, but adds to give me negative eight. Negative six and negative two. Perfect. So my factors now, I have X plus three over x minus 6 and x minus 2. Okay, how do we feel about step 1? Good? Okay. Mm -hmm. Step 2 is to set step 2 is to check for elimination. So to check can you eliminate? Check to eliminate. Okay? If I can eliminate then that leads to a hole in my graph. Okay? It's still an undefined point. But it's a hole in my graph. That means it's no longer part of my domain. Can I eliminate anything? No, factors are all different. 
Step three is to set each factor equal to zero. So we set the factors equal to yeah. zero. Hence why I gave myself more room to try to reiterate the steps. So if I have x minus six equals zero and x minus two equals zero, what can x not be? X cannot be six and X cannot be two. So those are my domain restrictions. That's what these are called. These are my domain restrictions, right? They're not zeros. Like the ones in the top are zeros the ones in the bottom. Yeah, so this is just for me to figure out if I make this zero, what would X be? X would be six. And because we can't have zeros in the denominator, that's why X cannot be six and X cannot be two. Does that make sense? So it's not the advantage of being zero. Exactly. Those are our domain restrictions. And in this case, they turn out to be vertical asymptotes. And they're asymptotes because I could not eliminate them. So when I write this out, my domain is doing this. So my domain... My function is traveling along from negative infinity, mind its own business, and then, uh-oh, it gets to two. And can it touch two? No. So I have to stop and start over, and I'm traveling along, traveling along, and then I get to six. Uh-oh, I have to stop and then restart, and then I travel along to infinity. That is my domain. There are breaks in my function, and those breaks are my asymptotes. Does that make sense? Does this like kind of make us some flashbacks? Like no one's like, I've never seen this before. I've never seen this before. <sighs> some people just choose to lie to me. No, I'm not lying. You've seen this before. I know for a fact. <laughs> I know you've seen, you've seen this before. Okay. So that's the basic thing that you should have left algebra two being able to do with a simple rational function. Does this sound like something you can do from algebra two? Yes. Is this yes? Okay, so what we have here are just making sure you're comfortable reading the arrow notations and what they're saying. Um, so as we keep going, we're going to talk about what are we describing, what's happening. So taking it from algebra two into calculus, are you going to grab the, the posters? Anna? Okay. Um, taking it from algebra two to calculus is now we're going to be using more symbolic notation. Okay, so if you see right here, if I have as x goes to a negative, they're behind my desk. Right? A negative, that means as X approaches A from the left, what is it doing? The reason why we now have A in place instead of infinity or negative infinity is because of those asymptotes, right? So as A comes to the asymptote from the left, what is it doing? As A comes to the asymptote, well, for you, it'd be like this, right? This is my left for you, right? Okay. So as A comes to the asymptote from the left, what is it doing? Is it increasing, decreasing, right? As A comes to the asymptote from the right, is it increasing or decreasing. That's why we now have that A present, okay? We're asking how is it behaving around that asymptote, that discontinuity, okay? Infinity. So infinity is, again, whether I'm going all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Now, necessarily, there isn't going to be asymptotes that way. It's just describing what are your traditional end behaviors, okay? Um, huh? Yeah. Yes. So that's just where our notations are. And I'm going to stop teaching you right now. Um, and we will pick up here where we talk about how does this all come together using these notations. So read over the notations with your peers. Be ready to utilize these no notations and apply them to analyzing rational functions and their asymptotes. Okay? All right. 